In LA this week. We've covered the city's computer giveaways before, but this one is the first surprise one and an extra special treat. They're being given away to at risk or formerly incarcerated youth trying to turn their lives around. I'm Gil Reyes with a story next. Drones, the new way to fight LA fires, and two of them made their maiden voyage during the Skirball fire. I'm Anna Margos, and we'll have more coming up. I'm Rasha Goel. Up next, a special gift to help kids in the valley become super readers. Hello and welcome to LA This Week. Thanks for joining us, I'm Yana Kay. Well, following demands to shut down in the battle over gentrification, a hub for Chicano art will remain where it is. Gil Reyes reports on the help the city gave to self-help graphics and art. The center's influence spans the globe, and thanks to funding from the city of Los Angeles, self-help graphics and art will remain a fixture in Boyle Heights. This will allow self-help to continue to provide its programming and its services. Councilman uh, Jose Wizar announces the city's $825,000 commitment to this art space. Along with money the center raised on its own, the center now has enough money to buy the property it's occupied for years on East 1st Street. It feels incredibly exciting. Co-director Betty Avila says ownership will allow self-help to concentrate on growing its operations. The center also offers musical performances, art classes for youth, also space for painters who can't afford their own studios. Famous artists like Gronk, Frank Romero, and Barbara Carrasco have all exhibited here, while the worldwide popularity of Dia de los Muertos could be traced here too. The center hosts what's believed to be the oldest Day of the Dead commemoration in the U.S. You have working side by side simultaneously professional artists, um, you know, Chicano legacies, emerging artists, and you'll have youth who are coming in and they're part of our workshops uh, and discovering their own creative voice. But lately, activists angry over gentrification in Boyle Heights have demanded the center and nearby art galleries to close down or move, feeling so-called hipster art is squeezing longtime residents out. But artist and teacher Ophelia Esparza defends the center as a cultural hub for Latinos and is glad it's staying put. In all the years I've been connected in my age, I'm still learning, and it's, that makes it exciting. <laughs> with more eye-opening art and artists waiting to be discovered. In Boyle Heights, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Total cost of the property, $3.6 million. A chunk of that money came from leftover funds from the now dissolved Community Redevelopment Agency. Well, firefighters are counting them among the heroes in the recent LA wildfires, especially the Skirball Fire. The UAS, or Unmanned Aerial System, drone for short, has become part of LA firefighters' arsenal. Anna Marco shows us what they can do. The drone is no mere toy for the L.A. Fire Department. It can mean the difference in saving homes and lives in an L.A. wildfire and in knowing how to best deploy crews and equipment. Two of the department's latest gadgets made their maiden voyage during the Skirball fire last December. It allows me to know for sure what I'm dealing with and immediately. It was, a, it was good to get it out and be able to show what we can do. We, what we did is we went through this canyon and a couple other spots. We were using the infrared camera to identify different heat signatures on the hillsides to help extinguish those hot spots and protect homes. High-end videography detecting hot spots, and that's just the beginning. The bigger drone is capable of detecting the presence of gas in hazardous situations and has many other uses. Firefighters believe it's the wave of the future in firefighting. You have to understand this is a massive movement within public safety. LA firefighters now have six of these, but they want to see 20 so they can equip all their battalion command rigs and specialized units and keep Angelinos safer than ever. The helicopters are able to go and perform their duties of dropping uh, water, functioning in a search and rescue capacity. They're at a higher altitude. They also have some optics difference, but we can get in really close. Firefighters predict in a few years, no major fire department will be without the drones. At several thousand dollars each, they aren't cheap, 
but they've already paid their way on their first fire call. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. The LA Fire Department has already spent more than $40,000 on their drones, which are funded by the LA Fire Department Foundation. While it's not enough to build housing for the homeless, mental health services are needed too. Gil Reyes reports on two groups fighting the good fight to end homelessness together. It is celebration time for these formerly homeless families. They're housed in happier thanks to two main groups. There's PATH, or People Assisting the Homeless. They provide permanent supportive housing. There's also the LA Child Guidance Clinic. They offer mental health services for youth. We all know that it's usually not one thing that sets people back, but a combination. And by combining both of these groups, we have a chance of ending homelessness. Mayor Eric Garcetti celebrated the group's successes over the past year with 1,100 kids in South Los Angeles, but acknowledges much more work lies ahead. So in the past year, we've seen homelessness just continue to increase, but we've been very fortunate to work with the families that you see behind us to get them into permanent housing. Over the last year, we housed over 1,200 individuals into homes of their own and served over 12,000 throughout the state. Meantime, the LA Child Guidance Clinic offers mental health services for young people from first grade to 25 years old. The National Coalition for the Homeless says young people suffering from mental illness are much more likely to wind up on the streets. We have increased our services, uh, more services in the schools, in the homes, in the community. So that has been a tremendous, tremendous success for the organization. And we can't do it, do it alone. We have some very committed, dedicated staff. Also helping are voter-approved tax increases to fund construction of homeless housing and boost services in the new year. In South Los Angeles, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Measure HHH aims to build 10,000 units of permanent supportive housing, while Measure H is expected to raise $355 million a year for homeless services. Well, attention job seekers, hundreds of positions to help those who are homeless have recently opened up. Gil Reyes reports on a first-of-its-kind job fair, with many more to come thanks to voter approval. These job seekers gathered at City Hall want careers tackling the worst problem facing Los Angeles today, homelessness. I was homeless at the age of 14. Um, my mother was uh, murdered on Christmas Eve uh, 16 years ago. Um, I wasn't accepted in my family due to my sexual orientation. So I just went out and decided to sleep on the streets. Today we're happy to report Sharice Ortega is no longer homeless or jobless. This is her at work with the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority. She now gets paid to meet people on the street and connect them with housing and services. And more jobs like these have opened up to help the growing number of unsheltered people in L.A. County. People who have experienced homelessness, uh, been down on their luck, who need a helping hand up. Uh, and that's what we're here to, to do today. South LA Council Member Curran Price here to support the city's first ever homeless services provider job fair. Some 30 employers are looking to fill 900 positions. Jobs like social workers, outreach directors, case managers and accountants. Many of these opportunities opened up with the passage of Measure H. The voter approved tax to fund more services for the homeless. Mayor Eric Garcetti is also at the hiring event to support. So the city of Los Angeles will continue doing this job fair every quarter until every position is filled. So tell your friends, come back if you don't get that job that you wanted today. And land a career helping others. I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. At last count, the number of homeless people in L.A. County has surged 23 percent since the previous year. Measure H for Homeless Services and Measure HHH for Homeless Housing aim to reduce that number. Well, Pershing Square is about to get a lot more homey and inviting, thanks to a nonprofit group called Pershing Square Renew. Here's Anna Marcos to show us what it's all about. Pershing Square is about to get a new sparkle as city leaders and designers work to give the park a major makeover with a project called Pershing Square Renew. 
We have uh, many more people coming to live downtown. We have many more visitors coming to downtown. Uh, we have people who, with families in downtown. So we want this place to be that open space town square that downtown Los Angeles deserves. LA city leaders held a competition in 2015 asking for designs with a concept around radical flatness. The idea of leveling the entire park so it will be flat with the sidewalk. The winning design team has now developed its project and is revealing the details to the public for the first time. We've uh, migrated that to radical openness. It's really important for people to be able to see inside the park. These days, it's still a pretty great space, but it's a lot of concrete and a lot of walls. And I think both the concrete and the walls need to sort of be able to move aside to have more of a park-like feel here in the square. I'm very excited about what's uh, the, the environment on Olive Street that'll be created with, uh, with the historic Biltmore and all of the great activity on, on Olive. And then to have uh, the shade structure on that side of the street, you know, really creating a, a dynamic block, a pedestrian block. Other changes will include adding trees, greenery, and a new pergola, an outside structure for shade. Residents even got to give their own input on what they would like to see in the park. The new Pershing Square could reopen for business sometime in 2018. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. Former L.A. gang members are in for a surprise, free computers to help improve their lives. Gil Reyes reports from the city's latest PC giveaway. 30, 80, okay. The young people gathered behind the counter at Chinatown's Homeboy Industries and Homegirl Diner are serving up much more than just breakfast. Homeboys has helped me get my son back. It's helped me realize who I am as a person. It's helped me to love myself so I can love my son and be a father, help me go to school. Well, Homeboy's been around for 30 years, um, by, started by Father Greg Boyle. And uh, what we do is we help our gang members and convicted felons, people who've been in prison and juvenile camps. Uh, re enter into society. Helping these workers, too, are 50 free refurbished computers. Workers get in line to receive them thanks to the city's Our Cycle LA program. Our Cycle takes old city department office computers and repairs them for people in need. The idea comes from City Council President Herb Wesson the city's information technology agency and their partners. When you're looking at people who are coming out of gang life, people who are coming even out of jail, job skills, knowledge that could be accessed through the internet is extremely important. For job searching, online courses for better careers, and so much more. Most of the members of the council, especially somebody like myself, I come from the same environment that they came from. And so, as I've been blessed, I think it's important that we in government do what we can to bless the people we represent. The computers come with three free years of internet. The city hired the nonprofit group Human IT to upgrade the city's old PCs with the latest Windows 10 software. This is the first time that my mom has actually been able to participate in a distribution because she currently lives just outside Detroit, so this is really special for me. And then second, this is our first ever surprise giveaway. A surprise too for Nicole Cordero, a single mother of six working to turn her life around. She says a home computer will help. I'm not going to give up on my children. Um, I've let them down in the past, and um, just coming to Homeboys has changed my life. I feel like it's already preparing me for college, because at the end of the day, like we all know that technology is only advancing, so it's, I need to like get with the program. Over the past three years, the city's Our Cycle giveaway program has given away more than 3,100 computers to people who need them most, and more computers are on the way for 2018. Reporting outside Homeboy Industries, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. City Council President Herb Wesson says his goal is to have every person in the city in need of a computer to have one. Well, sometimes just a few little changes can make a big impact. Rasha Kawel has more on how the community recently came together to make Skid Row residents a bit more comfortable. These new colored benches are the latest additions to Gladys Park and San Julian Park in Skid Row. Those living in the area say they were much needed. There were already were uh, park benches here, but they were kind of old and worn down. And uh, the type of design it was, it was like uh, pretty hard on the buttocks, if you know what I mean. And so uh, there's a better, uh, 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 better design. While the benches had been provided, there wasn't enough funding for the installation. 
Thanks to community members from Skid Row, Council District 14, the Department of Recreation and Parks, the Mayor's Office Homeless Liaison and private partners, over 15 new benches were installed. We're just committed to trying to enhance this community as much as we can. Um, it's a big endeavor, especially in Skid Row, but this park is a place that is for fun and recreation and safety, and it's here as a community asset. So when they see the Park and Rex is working for the benefits of the homeless community, that makes other ones to get involved. Officials say this effort is part of bringing the community together and providing the same resources to all residents. We want to make sure that they, they have uh, the opportunity to uh, have pride and ownership of what we do here. That way they help us with the maintenance and the programming. This is the first of many changes that will be seen at the park. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Other changes include refurbishing the basketball court and setting up a bathroom to replace portable toilets. While well, hundreds of native-loving Californians took in a weekend of drumming and dancing as the 34th annual American Indian Pow Wow kicked off at Cal State Northridge. And Marcos takes us there. It was something of an equal opportunity Pow Wow. Everyone welcomed to try on their Pow Wow dance moves. And it didn't seem to matter what clothes you wore or what shape you were in, what your face looked like or what your age was. The powwow mostly is the dancing. That's really what the powwow is, is a kind of uh, a celebration, a kind of social gathering. I hadn't been to a powwow in decades, so I thought, hey, I'll go check it out. This was the Cal State Northridge 34th Annual Powwow put on by the American Indian Student Association and the school's American Indian Studies program. We all want that uh, awareness spread out there about the American Indian culture, so having people come in, learn some things, it's always good. My sorority sister is Native American, so this is part of our diversity event. And the Native American themed flyers, all hand drawn. You'll see on the arm it has resilience, so that's being able to withstand cultural genocide and just genocide in general for the American Indian peoples. And then on the tail, the bushel, it, it says resist, resistance. Okay, so you got a little symbolism in the mix. You could also get a little food and retail therapy, dream catchers, clothing, Indian art, Indian fry bread, and Indian jewelry, all up for a little bartering. A way to fire up the modern economic engine while honoring ancestral roots. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. About 300 people attended the celebration. Well, LAUSD students who don't have internet access at home are getting the chance to play fair on the road to success. Rasha Goel has more on how one of the largest phone companies is helping students stay connected when it comes to schoolwork. You all are the first big school in the city of LA to get the hotspot, to have free internet service. This little gadget right here will provide you internet service for the rest of your high school years, okay? Students at Garfield High School were the first to experience Sprint's One Million Project, which connects 9,000 Los Angeles high school students with free devices and free wireless service. This partnership with the LA Unified School District aims to help eliminate the homework gap by providing internet to those who don't have it at home. For any student to lack the tools needed to achieve puts that student at risk. None of you are at risk now of technology because this is yet another tool in your hands provided by Sprint so that you can achieve. Students will receive either a free smartphone, tablet or hotspot device and three gigs of high speed LTE data per month for up to four years while they're in high school. That it will be easier for us to do our homeworks, our assignments and keeping track with our grades. Officials say 75% of America's high school teachers assign homework that requires getting online. Yet there are 5 million families without internet connections at home. At my house, we, uh, I don't have a computer or really internet access, so I gotta wake up really early to go to a library or stay at school super late to finish my work. 
and it kind of it's a real pain especially since college apps are coming up i feel very excited i'm getting a chromebook and a hotspot because i don't have to stay at school so late this is the first year of the initiative the goal to connect one million students throughout the United States over the next five years. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Students also received a backpack, earpods, and Chromebook from the district. New year and new marijuana laws. City officials want to make sure you know the new regulations. The first Prop HHH funded housing development breaks ground and how to safely recycle your Christmas tree. All these stories in City B. Although recreational marijuana is now legal in California, Los Angeles officials said there are still some final steps required before sales will be allowed in the city. And they also warned that the use of the drug comes with significant restrictions and rules. Cannabis regulation officials said that applications from existing medical marijuana businesses will be processed first, followed by other applications. The initial wave of shops that open for recreational sales will be doing so under a temporary license while the city fully processes their applications and does all the necessary background checks. Meanwhile, LAPD will be making sure all marijuana regulations are followed. We'll uh, pay close attention to the use of marijuana in a vehicle, to a person driving impaired, to the person selling or furnishing marijuana to a minor. Those are all illegal actions and the department will take uh, aggressive action in, in, in enforcing the law. City officials broke ground on phase two of Path Metro Villas, the first permanent supportive housing complex financed by Proposition HHH, the voter-approved mandate that will help the city build 10,000 units of housing for Angelinos who are homeless over the next decade. The development is located in Council District 13 at 340 North Madison Avenue in LA. Prop HHH authorizes the city to issue up to $1.2 billion for the construction of permanent supportive housing and facilities. Path Metro Villas is expected to open in the spring of 2019 and will offer 187 affordable and permanent supportive apartments and 88 interim housing beds with programs focused around health, employment, housing placement and veteran services. Well, it's time to recycle that Christmas tree and city leaders want to make sure you do it safely. LA Sanitation and other city leaders demonstrated how to properly recycle Christmas trees and provided important fire safety tips at the East Valley Sanitation District Yard in Sun Valley. This annual Christmas tree recycling program, which is run by LA Sanitation, recycles up to 100,000 trees annually. These trees, which otherwise would have ended up in a landfill, are turned into mulch and compost to be used by residents for gardening and city staff for landscaping. You can either cut the tree in pieces and place them into the green bin, or if your tree is too big to cut, just put it curbside next to your bin on collection day. It's very dangerous to keep at home. We just want to make sure that the public knows where to take your Christmas tree, how to recycle it, and we're happy to take it off your hands. For a complete list of these locations, visit LACitySan.org. The Wonder Woman of Council District 6 recently gave children a gift to enhance their super reading powers. Rasha Goel explains. My secret identity lets me live a normal Ten-year-old Alina Lopez from Noble Avenue Elementary School was anything but shy when she volunteered herself to read in front of a room full of students. Reading is something that excites her and she knows will help her in the future. I enjoy reading because um, Reading helps me learn more about the, wor the world. Alina was among the many kids attending council member Nuri Martinez's reading event at the Panorama City Branch Library. It's the second one the councilwoman has hosted to help promote reading. This year's theme, Wonder Woman. The one thing I would just want to make sure our parents take away from this is that take advantage of the time that you have with your kids. Turn off that TV for at least an hour a day. Before your kids go to bed, make sure you create that reading space for them. Though I was a princess, I did not want to become the queen. I wanted to fight for justice and secretly enter the contest. What did she, did she want to be a princess? No. Not only did the kids get to read with Wonder Woman, but they also received superhero backpacks with books from Scholastic. It's wonderful. Uh, I, I love it. When my Alina was in second grade, they also had it. And I brought her, you know, like I said, I've, I've encouraged them to read a lot. I like reading because it helps me learn. 
And for some kids here, they were grateful for the opportunity to receive books. It's a good thing you guys doing this for the people that need the stuff because there's a lot of people that they have the money to go buy any in the stores. Thanks to the Wonder Woman of this district, these kids are receiving access to a superpower that will empower them for life. In Panorama City, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Councilwoman Nuri Martinez also held a similar event at the Van Nuys and Sun Valley Public Libraries. Well, here's your chance to try some unique flavors all in one location. Enjoy a little ice skating in the valley, and if you love Motown hits, we've got just the ticket. All this in this week's Things to Do. Smorgasburg LA is open every Sunday on the five-acre site of the weekday Alameda Produce Market in downtown LA, which is part of a larger, new development called Row Downtown LA. Each Sunday, find dozens of exciting food vendors at Smorgasburg LA, plus sophisticated shopping from the realms of design, craft, style, vintage, wellness, and more. Cultural events, pop-ups, and other surprises transform the vast site into a new experience in downtown LA's burgeoning scene and a unique destination for the region. Take a bite of LA on Sunday, January 14th, 21st, and 29th. For more, visit lasmorgasburg.com. The holidays may be over, but the fun isn't. If you haven't hit the ice rink this season yet, now's your chance. So strap on those ice skates and go for a ride at the Woodland Hills Ice Rink, the San Fernando Valley's only ice rink outside LA Live. From recreational skating, exhibitions, group and private classes to birthday parties, it's sure to entertain the whole family. For more, visit woodlandhillsice.com. It began as one man's story, became everyone's music, and is now Broadway's musical. Motown the Musical is the true American dream story of Motown founder Barry Gordy's journey from featherweight boxer to the heavyweight music mogul who launched the careers of Diana Ross, Michael Jackson, Smokey Robinson, and many more. Motown shattered barriers, shaped our lives, and made us all move to the same beat. Now experience it live on stage in the record-breaking smash hit Motown the Musical. For more, visit MotownTheMusical.com. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane from all of us here at LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityv.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.